In the chilling waters of the North Atlantic Ocean, the crew of HMS Jervis Bay braced themselves against the looming dread that shadowed their every move. The men knew the odds were stacked against them. Between June and October of 1940, over 270 Allied ships had met their doom. The German U-boats and surface raiders, relentless in their pursuit, left a trail of devastation in their wake. It was within this treacherous landscape that Jervis Bay, tasked with protecting a vulnerable convoy, would face an unthinkable challenge. As the convoy forged ahead, the formidable German warship Admiral Scheer appeared on the horizon. Captain Edward Fagan, a man of unwavering courage, made a decision that would change the course of history. He ordered the convoy to scatter and set his ship on a collision course with the enemy and into a battle that would test the limits of bravery and reveal the unbreakable spirit of those who dared to face the storm. Called into service. SS Jervis Bay, a magnificent and luxurious passenger and cargo liner, was launched on December 27, 1922. Measuring 549 feet long, with a beam of 71 feet and a draft of 28 feet, Jervis Bay was designed to carry up to 450 passengers and a large cargo load with a top speed of 16 knots. When World War II broke out, the British Royal Navy, desperate for more ships, requisitioned SS Jervis Bay in August 1939. The vessel underwent a massive transformation. Engineers removed her luxurious passenger cabins, added armor plating, and modernized her communications equipment. The conversion process was extensive, and Jervis Bay emerged as a warship that could accommodate up to 254 officers and enlisted men. The crew comprised many reservists and merchant seamen who had to quickly adapt to their new roles and responsibilities on board the armed cruiser. Training sessions and drills became a routine part of their lives as they prepared to face the harsh realities of war. Despite the efforts to prepare it for the fiercest war the world had ever seen, the ship was outfitted with seven 19th century six-inch guns and two three-inch guns that were even older. Recommissioned as HMS Jervis Bay on October 9, 1939, the armed merchant cruiser began her service with the Royal Navy. Assigned to the Northern Patrol, Jervis Bay's mission was to escort merchant ship convoys through the treacherous Atlantic waters. A gallant escort. Captain Edward Fagan, a World War I recipient of a Silver Sea Gallantry Medal, was promoted to captain in March 1940 and assigned to command Jervis Bay. Under Captain Fagan's leadership, the ship and its crew faced the unpredictable Atlantic Ocean, protecting their charges from the relentless German offensive. Throughout the early months of 1940, HMS Jervis Bay escorted numerous convoys, ensuring the safe passage of essential supplies and personnel across the ocean. The convoy system was a crucial strategy implemented by the British Royal Navy to protect merchant ships from German U-boat attacks. Grouping ships together and providing an armed escort offered a higher chance of survival for the vulnerable vessels, but it also meant that they were prime targets for the enemy. As the war escalated, the danger to convoys from German warships and submarines grew exponentially. The Atlantic crossing was fraught with danger as U-boats and surface raiders lurked beneath the waves, waiting for their next prey. Captain Fagan and the crew of Jervis Bay navigated the perilous waters, prepared to defend their convoy at any cost. Upon taking command, Fagan spoke to his crew about facing the enemy. He warned, quote, I shall take you in as close as I possibly can. This statement proved prophetic, as the ship would face its ultimate challenge in November of that year. On the Warpath On October 28, 1940, convoy HX-84 embarked from Halifax. The following day, nine more ships joined the convoy, with a total formation of 38 merchant vessels. Jervis Bay, positioned between the 4th and 5th ranks, would be the convoy's only protection during the 10-day passage to Britain. Simultaneously, the fearsome warship Admiral Scheer, a Deutschland-class heavy cruiser, prowled the North Atlantic waters. Commanded by Captain Theodore Crank, Admiral Scheer boasted a top speed of 28 knots and was equipped with a formidable and up-to-date array of guns and torpedoes. 
At the end of October, Admiral Scheer embarked on her first combat sortie of the war. Slipping through the Denmark Strait, her crew quickly identified the HX-84 convoy using radio intercept equipment. Only six days later, on November 5th, the German vessel seaplane located the convoy a mere 88 miles away. As the German ship closed in, a lookout aboard one of the Allied ships in the convoy spotted a mast on the horizon. It was Admiral Scheer. Moment of Truth Knowing his ship was no match for the mighty German cruiser, Captain Fagan knew he had to act fast if he wanted his convoy to remain safe. At 5.45 p.m., Captain Fagan sounded action stations and fearlessly placed his ship directly between the convoy and the enemy. Despite being well out of range of the German shear, Fagan immediately began firing his six-inch guns, drawing the raiders' fire and giving the convoy a fighting chance to escape. He also ordered the convoy to scatter, deploying smoke canisters to create a smoke screen. At a distance of about 10 miles, Captain Crank swung Admiral Scheer to port, bringing both his triple turrets to bear on the convoy and Jervis Bay, and opened fire. The second salvo splashed only 50 yards off Jervis Bay's bow, sending 150-foot spouts of seawater up, soaking Bay's forward gun crews. Admiral Scheer's third salvo hit Jervis Bay's bridge, knocking out her rangefinder, wireless, and fire control equipment, and also injuring Captain Fagan. As Shear continued to fire, Jervis Bay was hit repeatedly on her superstructure. Her hull was perforated in several places, and fires burned uncontrolled all over the ship. No way out. Determined to neutralize the escort ship and attack the convoy, Shear's commander continued training his big guns on Jervis Bay. Darkness was falling, and he needed to sink Jervis Bay quickly to attack the convoy. Each salvo from Admiral Scheer launched two and a half tons of ordnance at the stricken ship. Jervis Bay steamed at its attacker, firing her guns until her steering gear was knocked out. With the ship aflame and sinking, Captain Fagan maintained the unequal fight and stayed in command despite his injury, buying time for the convoy ships to escape. Captain Fagan stayed on the collapsing bridge under continuous fire from Admiral Scheer's big guns. He struggled down the starboard side of the bridge, aided by a signalman heading aft. He stopped to encourage a gunner along the way and ordered more smoke deployed. However, Captain Fagan did not make it. Mayhem. Meanwhile, exploding cordite bags on Jervis Bay's poop deck wrongly convinced Captain Crank that the smaller ship was still firing, despite the severe damage. He didn't dare concentrate on the convoy until Jervis Bay was eliminated. Any damage to his ship from a lucky hit could seriously affect her ability to escape the Royal Navy. Crank continued focusing his big guns on Jervis Bay, but turned some of the smaller ones against ships in the convoy within range. After the loss of Captain Fagan and an hour of unrelenting German fire, Lieutenant Commander George Rowe, now in command, ordered the crew to abandon ship. All lifeboats had been destroyed, but rafts and the ship's 18-foot jolly boat survived the bombardment and were launched. Most of Jervis Bay's men jumped into the icy subarctic sea, some making it to the rafts and jolly boat. Others clung to floating debris. Shortly after the order to abandon ship, Jervis Bay went down. Captain Sven Olander of the Swedish ship Storholm, deeply moved by Captain Fagan and Jervis Bay's bravery, rallied his crew to return and rescue survivors. They agreed and saved 68 of Jervis Bay's crew, with three succumbing to their injuries shortly after. Storholm then made her way back to Halifax, arriving on November 12th. Meanwhile, Admiral Scheer pursued the scattered convoy ships, sinking six of them. Five Royal Navy battlegroups, composed of various battleships, cruisers, and destroyers searched for Admiral Scheer to no avail. Captain Olander later recounted, quote, Jervis Bay did not have a chance, and we all knew it, but she rode like a hero and stayed to the last. Remembrance Admiral Scheer continued her rampage into the South Atlantic and the Indian Ocean, 
sinking or capturing ten more cargo ships before her journey ended in the spring of 1942 when she returned to Germany and became a training ship well into late 1944. The vessel was later put into service again, supporting ground operations for the defense against the Soviet army. Her time in the war concluded in April 1945 when she capsized during a British air raid at Kiel. Captain Fagan's heroism caught the attention of King George VI, who recommended him for the Victoria Cross, and Fagan's sister received the medal on his behalf at Buckingham Palace. To this day, the brave and heroic actions of HMS Jervis Bay remain the only patrol duty to win such an award. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to learn about other inspiring acts of courage at sea. And remember to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest videos. Stay tuned for more.